Hello there, I'm Alger Hill. Welcome back to Some Thrones of Britannia. We are dealing with a little bit of a crisis because currently the English are very upset with me. I'm a little worried. I am indeed worried. Now, everyone's also very disloyal to me, be mostly because uh, their estates are low. I think that's because I'm holding the majority of the estates. So what I need to do is I need to award people, in individual people, more estates. So Siegfriedus, who's the heir... He's already holding an office. This guy can hold an office. The Chamberlain, two in governance, two influence, and two loyalty. Boom. A character already occupies this post. Okay, never mind. Okay, it'd be nice if, uh... Why is it... No, what, why is it, uh... Why is it even an option, then? If someone already has that, why is it even an option? Alright, let's seek a wife. So find this character a suitable bride amongst the ladies at court. Nice. Characters marry. 39. And loyal. Plus two loyalty to her husband. Yes. Excellent. You. We do not have enough money to seek that, but that's okay. So we do have uh, some estate issues. Namely that we have way too many estates. Just way too many. Why are you so pissed off? Come on, bro. So I've got too much governance right here. So Longcaster needs to go to someone else who's very pissed off. Uh, let's give it to Eldred. There we go. That makes everyone a little bit less salty. It's because I was holding way too many estates. That's why everyone was so pissed off all the time. That's fine. And then we do have some uh, occasional risks of rebellion. That's fine. A little bit of low public order over here too. But we can deal with that in due, in due time. All right. Whew. Scary shit. We're gonna take that, and then these guys are gonna sit quietly for a little while, and just basically build themselves up. Let's end our go. Then we're gonna need to move north as fast as possible to try and take as many settlements as possible before uh, we get wrecked from the north. We have built up a decent army though, a 15 strong army. I'm very pleased with that. Unfortunately, they are not very technologically superior, but we are numerically superior. We're, we're gonna be about the same size as they are, but we can try and take like a couple of their villages, wipe out their food production or something, and reduce their un increase their unrest. That would be pretty powerful. I wonder what the hell this guy's doing. Dude, they actually have 24 troops right there, but they are fighting in the north. So they're busy. They are very busy. Their armies are also very large. So they have a very long, large economic base. So if we can try and take their economic base from them, we should do quite well. I think it'll be all right. I think the problem is in my Wessex series, I didn't understand the estate thing. There was no advice or warning that I had to hand out estates. A fleet of Nordman raiders have arrived south of Britannia. Oh my. And Fingal raiders arrived south of Britannia. That's fine. We don't care about that. Alright. So we're just going to go take this from these guys. Hello. Oh, look at that sacking. Oh, that's so good. I'm going to sack it. Mm. Now we're going to capture it. Look at all that cash. Crazy good. Look, I still got tons of money from that. That's awesome. Okay. I don't know what the fuck these guys are doing. Get over here. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Alright, well, let's go. Oh my god. Still too many estates. Ah! Jesus. Still too many estates. Okay. Let's give it to... Thunbrad. I'm not really sure exactly what that actually does. Now, I do really want to be moving north and trying to take as much of this as possible. We could take this, but I'm worried about these guys here. Because apparently, I still need to wipe them off. No, I can just send this guy to take care of him. He's fine. Alright. So, we'll spend another one more turn building up our armies. Uh, so, we have two Nace Experiment. Do I want to get any more troops? We have a decent little axe line. I like this. A decent archer line, too. Our cavalry front is fine. I don't think we really need any more cavalry. One more Royal Then, and I don't know, like a better axeman, maybe? And some more axemen? Because axemen are just great to hold the line in general. Yeah, let's do that. Make our army a little bit better. 
Now, is there anything that we can be upgrading to make things a little bit better for everyone so they're not as salty all the time? We are mass producing everything as fast as possible. These guys are pissed off. This would unfortunately still cut my food production a little bit. But it would mean I would get a little bit more defense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why does this not increase public order? That's what I don't understand. I just don't get this. Why does it not increase public order? So, settlements. Church community can... Okay, so churches do. It's very frustrating. Hmm. Well, I wish I had these, because they probably do have churches, right? They do not. Oh, they do look like churches. Well, that would be great. Unfortunately, we don't own that, so... This would just increase market and fur production. I don't have fur... I don't own furs, so... Not sure what you want from me. And I'm concerned about this. I feel like building that would be a good plan. This is being built already. Let's just start saving the cash. We can maybe use it for events and stuff. We're gonna spend one more turn uh, chilling and resting, and then we're gonna move up to decor. Just to try and reinforce these guys. It takes seven turns to replenish these. Holy fuck. It's a long time to build that up. One more turn, and then we're gonna move this army up north to Dakor and take Karel, and then move east to Girom, and that shit, and just try and occupy as many of their stuff as possible, wipe out their economic base, and see if we can meet them in battle. By then, we'll have a 20-strong army, and I think we should be fine. We're gonna have to fight a little siege, of course, but it's not a huge deal. I think we're gonna be fine. Hey, they've landed at last. Jesus. Took you long enough. I don't think I should have sacked this stuff. I think I should have occupied it. I have no money issues. I think I've definitely screwed myself by sacking things. I shouldn't have done that. That was a bad choice. Definitely a bad choice. That's alright. Alright. What? What was that? Did something just get occupied? No. Nothing to do with me. English rebels. Cool. Nothing to do with me. Cool, though. Maybe we could try and take that land for ourselves. Uh, I hope Dogencaster doesn't rebel. So, this guy's got un... Oh, man. We need to increase his zeal. Look at this. Oh, the corruption. Minor diplomatic penalty towards all other factions. Liar. Minus two command. Principled. Okay, well, let's increase his zeal a little bit. Uh, where's his zeal? It's barred. Perfect. That helps out a little bit, I suppose. Instructions complete. Cult of Saint Cuthbert. Our foes shall fall. Come on, I just want to eat your face. Enemy blood will flow. This guy, man, this guy. Attack. Come here. Let me mess you up. Let me just mess you up a little bit. It'll be fine. It'll be a great time. You can rely on us. We'll stay here to defend that area. Unfortunately, he's probably going to try and grab that from us. That's annoying. Um. So this would obviously piss everyone off a bit more. This would increase our economy nicely. Ooh, iron production. However, what if those armies suddenly appear and steal everything? Then I would lose everything. These guys are already incredibly upset. Each level of the primary building in this settlement unlocks a new building slot. In order to achieve more slots, first upgrade the main settlement chain. Okay. So... Alright, let's upgrade this then. We have the food. That'd be fine. We okay. You guys stay there. Cool. Haven't done a lot with our income right yet, but that's okay. We could start to raise a third army soon, but I think the food is a problem. Um, we want to, but I don't quite have the food that I want to do that. So we're going to take our big army to the north, take those villages, and then we'll be able to wreck some face. All right, looks like another faction's been destroyed. It's into the turn there. And we have Thornbrand, a governor, has just leveled up. Ah, that's good. We can improve his zeal now. Get rid of strict, because, oh my god, the strict is so harsh. Let's improve his zeal with bards. That'll help out the public order a little bit. We just encountered the Finnegals. Oh, that's cool art. Hello. Okay, how did we encounter them? They're literally miles away. Trait more than enough. Plus one governance and plus one influence. Wise. At this point in time, there's an abundance of food and none should go hungry. Gain from not having a food shortage. Cool, man. 
my warriors oh my god what the fuck are these guys doing Our foes will suffer to greater blunder. just die already thank you jesus christ and cut him in the arm break his elbow and then break his shoulder or something it seems like a lot of elbows like a lot of, uh, 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 rather than actually killing him three lost and just i don't know kill captives uh, no ransom captives faction destroyed the west moringas and mission succeeded 1000 oh yeah Battle leader. The army has shown its might and rewarded them well. Now even those in, they defeat are having to join them and they fight for you. Awesome. So reduction of upkeep cost, recruitment cost, and unit replacement rate increase. Mission succeeded. Eliminate the West Morangus. Your war fervor has increased. Ah, oh, excellent. Okay, my war fervor is now massive. Which means plus one um, happiness for everybody and extra fame. Oh, yes. Here we go. War fervor has increased. And also here, King, making an effort. Cool. So now they're not as rebellious. Though it will take time, it can become accepted as a leader who deserves his power and status rather than usurper. Ugh. This means I basically always have to ransom people. We Literally always. Alright, we've managed to make this work. Where are their forces? Their forces are all the way in the north. Yeah, they're going to take ages to come down this way. So we have some good time to really mess with them. Unfortunately, Kanut has very low loyalty. Estates low. Again, with this estates low bullshit. What, why does just... What are these random estates? Uh, to Carl. There we go. Gotta hand out enough titles. I still don't really know what it actually even does when you get these estates. I literally have no idea. Alright, let's keep trying to improve our armies now. Um... So we have a couple of basic axemen and a couple of archers. Unfortunately, it's not re they're not reinforcing, which is frustrating. So we're going to have to wait a little while for that. Let's get one nice big cavalry unit. Oh, let's get a scout cavalry, because these are the reserve forces. And then we'll get a couple... Do we want long axes or do we want the thins? Oh, these are so much cheaper. These are just so much cheaper. We'll get a couple more axemen as well. That'll be good. All right, and that has opened up finally the melee specialists. Any simple tongue with a sword or an axe, but battle aptitude takes devotion to a chosen weapon. Recruiting dedicated swordsmen or axemen will also encourage others to specialize and make themselves available. This allows us to recruit shield biters and her. Oh my god, and husk girls. Jesus, thank Christ. Okay, good. So in four turns' time, we're going to be able to get much better axemen available. We can start using those to really fill up our armies. Now, we may want to consider the fight, the plight of Mercia at some point. Or possibly even these guys. No, these are also Mercia. Shit, this is actually all Mercia. Mercia is actually freaking massive. These are our vassals, though, so that's fine. So we definitely want to start considering that. The south is basically guarded almost entirely by Mercia and our vassal to the southeast. Uh, we basically just don't need to touch them. We just need to push north and take all of that northern section for ourselves. We're still crazy rich. Um, so we could improve this and get more food, more awesomeness. Ah. So Manchester now has an extra slot because I've upgraded it. So what could we get? So we could get a church, which would increase everyone's happiness a little bit. We could get a law field, a thing, which is a little bit of happiness and a reduction of corruption, including all adjacent provinces, which is cool. Uh, a tanner for fur production. Meh. Uh, grain pits, which increases supplies and food production and unit replenishment in this province. Pretty good, pretty good. Or patrols garrison, and this provides additional garrison of two spearmen and axemen and a curl archers. So that makes your garrison insanely valuable. I mean, it's already an army of six. It becomes an army of nine then. Uh, ten even, so that's pretty good. But an estate itself, uh, some of this. Can't build any of these just yet. Okay. 20 XP for units per turn. Oh, so good. Um, I think... Well, I'm actually a little bit concerned. I kind of want to build the garrison. But I think for now, I'm going to need to brew the thing that will increase happiness. Let's build a thing and reduce corruption. A democratic process needs only the simplest of locales. 
So whereas the Vikings, wherever the Vikings arrived to settle, they brought their customs and legal systems with them. In the latter part of the 9th century, the area in which laws were recently settled, the Danes held sway, was known as the Dane Law, a geographical demarcation created after King Arthur of West Saxons inflicted defeat upon them in 878, in a treaty that granted the lands of the five boroughs, in which to expand their own laws. It was in these regions that the freemen of Viking society would gather into things to settle their disputes out in the open. Things were groups of individuals assembled to make collective decisions, a practice considered to be the cradle of Scandinavian democracy. They would make important political decisions while overseeing their laws were being upheld, and the thing states where they would gather were often the focal points for trade and religious activities. In Viking Age Britain, the use of things was not confined to the Dane law, but everywhere the Vikings settled, including Shetland, Orkney, Highlands of Scotland, and Isle of Man. That's definitely a bit of thing, uh, and that's going to allow us to increase a little bit of public order and also reduce corruption in adjacent provinces as well. And this is actually a really good place to do it because these guys are adjacent to a lot of provinces. Awesome. We are still crazy good with food. We can increase food by 10. Or 15 right here. Oh, man. Um, so upgrading this would actually be quite cool. We can increase some slots. Or actually, in Lodis, we could do that. We're actually going to be able to do that very soon. Once these guys are a little bit happier. And Katera could also be upgraded. I think this is going to be a good shot if I do this. Obviously, to reduce my food a little bit. But that's going to really help out with regards to being able to build more. And also, more garrisons in case they get surprise attacked. Uh, da -da 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 -da, this is a market. So this is just sheep. So cloth production. and So farm and market. This is actually the main thing that's going to give us income. So upgrading that is a good shout, I think. And we'll save up a little bit of cash as well, because in four turns time, we're going to be able to do some fun stuff. Alright. Let's go back to Manchester now. With this army. Nice. Oh, I like this. Okay, they're going to do well. If if there is a rebellion or civil war, the uh, the, the garrison force can deal with that. But I think Manchester's going to do fine. Once I upgrade the next section in Manchester, I'm going to probably build up another garrison thing to increase the garrison patrols so that if Manchester does get attacked, there will be like a 10-strong army to defend it. And I think I can probably defend Manchester with just the 10 units. And they're not very good. They are only garrison units. But at this stage of the game, they're very powerful. So building up an early garrison like organization is very valuable because you get a huge amount of strength, like crazy good. Because they're not very good units, but everyone has those units. So they're basically the same as them. And you are also the player against the stupid AI. And you also have walls and tower defenses. Oh, I don't like this. Hello? Are you raiders? No, they're not raiders. They're just, they're chill homies. They're being chill homies. Achieved greater rank. All right, faction encounter the Northmen. That's fine. We don't care about that. Who's upgraded? A general... Oh, my king. Guthred. Love it. Okay. Look at this influence. Mm-mm. He's also well-connected. Good influence, governance, and 10% husband while governing. Okay, cool. Ulbrecht's sword. The finest Frankish braid inscribed with geometric patterns the name is maker to infuse it with his skill. <gasps> Five melee skill for all units in commanded army. This guy's good, guys. This guy is super strong. Provide security. Gain from winning battles in own land. Okay, cool. So we can increase championship, or we could probably also increase more quartermaster for more movement range. And to be honest, that's kind of what I want to do. I'm not going to be doing any kind of raiding at the moment. Unit replenishment could be very valuable for maintaining consistent movement and making sure our troops are alive. But right now, what I think is probably going to be best is if I keep up quartermaster movement. Yeah. Quartermaster movement does seem to be the best thing. And also, eventually, it also reduces upkeep cost as well. You can rely on us. Yeah, we can. Blood will flow. Get him, boys. It's hard. Onwards. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some seriously experienced units as well. You can rely on us. All right. Dane Guild won't save you. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that'll save me or not. I think I'm okay with uh, food production right now. I'm still stupid rich, which is nice. These guys are starting to calm down. You know what? I might just automatically just upgrade this straight away. And the, this Manchester is super important to me because it is the food mine, basically. Everything requires on this. It might even be more valuable to actually build a fort here and defend this and then allow them to move into Manchester if they want to. Because this is where all the money is. The money and... Well, not money, but it's where all the, the food is made. So we are going to need to keep an eye on that. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm look. I'm pleased. It's looking good. Let's end the turn here. 
Are we ready, lads? I'm super ready. I'm so ready. Oh, sound just died there. So back into spring. We're going to move north now and try to attack. It's weird that they declared war on me without having an army on my borders. I feel like what happened is that the AI was, like, supposed to declare war on me. Like, they had to. But they weren't prepared in the slightest. Really kind of strange, to be honest. That's fine. Uh, we're going to move our forces up there to take care of them. It probably won't be that difficult, to be honest. Yeah, we, they're literally making no movements. We're just going to be able to take two really good villages, take a town. We might even be able to negotiate peace, having taken this entire section. If we can sack some stuff, imagine the cash we'll make. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. Do be sure to leave a like and a comment on the video. Let me know what you think of the series so far. I was Aldrin. I'm continuing to be, and this has been some Thrones of Britannia, playing, of course, as the Northumbrian Vikings. We'll see you next time. Uh, bye bye.